you look at this? My gosh. Europe continues to burn. It's Greece's largest ever wildfire evacuation. An unexpected storm in the Reutlingen area made residents feel like they were in the middle of winter. The world has been watching as Europe's weather has gone crazy this summer. The cause? It didn't surprise me and it's probably not going to surprise you. Experts say that global warming is at least partly to blame. But how does that actually work? And how much of an impact can it really have? Extreme weather is wrecking lives and livelihoods. A month's rain falling in 24 hours caused floods and landslides in Slovenia, leaving thousands homeless. Drought also damaged crops in southern Europe, forcing the European Commission to lower projected yield estimates, while temperatures topped the high 40s. But is this really our fault? Have we caused this erratic weather? Because of us uh, putting continuously uh, increase in putting fossil fuel emissions into the atmosphere, uh, we are now at a much warmer world. And as a result of this warming, well, what happens is that it, it, it also affects the various processes that govern the climate or the weather that we see. Various processes that govern the weather. What's she talking about? We all know what the weather is. Just look outside the window. But the various processes that govern that, well, they're pretty complex. But a major factor is this. Do you remember this from school? It's the water cycle. I remember it, and I was always fascinated by it. Should we take a look? Most of the world's water is found in lakes, rivers, and of course, oceans. It's constantly being heated by the sun. As the surface warms, some of the water evaporates, becoming a gas. It rises into the atmosphere where it forms clouds. When the clouds become dense enough, the water forms rain, hail or snow and falls to the ground. What isn't used flows back into rivers and the ocean continuing the cycle. The water cycle doesn't stop and the evaporation, the clouds, the rain, they are all a crucial part of what we call weather. So how is global warming affecting that? Burning coal, driving cars, cutting down trees, these human activities create carbon dioxide, which goes into the atmosphere, effectively creating a blanket that traps in heat. So far, the Earth has warmed by about 1.2 degrees Celsius already. It doesn't sound like much, but it's supercharging the water cycle. The cycle itself is pretty much the same as we learned in school, but it's more intense, and that's what's causing problems. The increased temperatures mean that more water evaporates from bodies of water like oceans. Warmer air can hold more water. Scientists estimate around 7% more for every degree of warming. And more water in the air makes rain more likely. Because the air is so laden with water, when the rainfall comes, it's often much heavier and often comes in intense, unpredictable storms. Rivers and waterways can't hold it all, leading to flooding in some regions. In others, the increased evaporation causes drought. When it does rain in these places, the dried out earth can't absorb much of it, making floods even more likely. So the water cycle is now intensified due to climate change. An intensified water cycle exasperates both droughts as well as uh, intense rainfall. In other words, this supercharged water cycle is partly to blame for all this mad weather. But is that really so? I mean, we've always had weather, right? By looking at these events uh, in the current climate uh, with, and with respect to our past climate, we can see whether you know such events would have been less or more likely in the past as compared to now. And if there is a change in likelihood, whether it has been made more extreme or less extreme, or you know if, if, it, if it hasn't changed at all. Mariam Zakaria is a researcher with World Weather Attribution. It's an organization that tries to figure out how climate change affects whether an extreme weather event will happen and how bad it will be. Such answers are important to understand um, where we are now in terms of the extreme weather we are experiencing now and what we can expect in the future. Uh, and this is an important uh, answer also to help um, uh, understand policies to help revise existing policies and to make new policies to curb fossil fuel emissions and um, to to help uh, to help uh, reduce or mitigate the impacts of uh, such events.
Climate attribution is a new and growing field of science that looks at the impact climate change is having on the weather by looking at weather observations and climate models. World Weather Attribution found that the extreme heat seen in southern Europe this July would have been virtually impossible if humans had not warmed the planet by burning fossil fuels. Researchers also analysed the rainfall that led to flooding in Emilia Romagna in Italy in May. They found that the extreme weather there was not made more likely or more intense by climate change. What happened there was simply a very rare event, made worse by rapidly growing cities and limited space for water drainage that increased risk of flooding. But these analyses are not making everything black and white. It's not always easy to say whether climate change has influenced specific weather events. So the 1.2 degrees Celsius of warming means that every single heat wave is now hotter, longer and more likely. Now for extreme rainfall, we know that the warmer atmosphere can hold more moisture. This means that many rainfall events are much heavier because of climate change. But not all rainfall events are heavier because of climate change. This was never going to be simple. The way the weather works is complex. Extreme weather events are never down to just one cause, and the science is complicated and slow. We know the record heat that we saw in Europe this summer was made much more likely by climate change. But the jury is out on the Norway floods and the German hail that we saw at the beginning of this video. The studies haven't been done yet. We know that climate change is supercharging the water cycle. Remember our school drawing? But weather is also affected by natural phenomena like El Nino. It's a climate pattern that causes warmer ocean temperatures and can affect global weather, leading to wildfires and more. But what humans are doing is undeniably having an effect. And with all the changes that are coming with global warming, perhaps it's hard not to panic. We can't turn back time and reverse what we've done. But some of us are doing things that can help slow climate change and help us live with this mad weather. Trees. Having more trees is almost always a good idea. They absorb the global warming gas carbon dioxide. They shade and cool their surroundings and can help against flooding by absorbing water. And diversifying crops to include drought-resistant varieties so that crops fail less often and when they do, it's not such a problem. Early warning systems can also help communities better prepare for extreme weather. We have a global problem and so we need to think big. The most obvious thing we can do is to stop burning fossil fuels as fast as we can. That will slow global warming, but it won't reverse things. So we need to make changes to adapt too, where they make sense. It's not just one thing. It's about politics. It's about what we buy. It's about the economy. It's existential, and it needs to become part of everything we do.